Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn some math. Today we will solve. Today we will solve some linear equations. This is the second time we are doing these exercises. Let's take a look at. Let's take a look at what we have here. The first first equation that we have is two p plus three equals 13. 2p plus 3 equals 13. Now our job is to get the unknown by itself as quickly as possible. Anything that is a known quantity we want to, want to bring it to the other side. We bring the 3 to the other side by subtracting 3 from both sides. This is a positive 13. So here positive 3 and a negative 3 when we subtract 3 from both sides the positive 3 is going to kill the negative 3 and we end up with 2p on this side. And on that side we have 13 minus 3, 13 minus 3 is 10. Now we have 2p is equal to 10, divide both sides by 2. We divide both sides by 2, 2, case, 2 is going to cancel out and p turns out is 5. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And we can quickly put it back in here to see that if it's, to see if this answer is correct. 2 times 5 is 10, 10 plus 3 is 13 which is exactly what we have there. Let's do the next one. Let's do the next one. 3x plus 4 equals 10. 3x plus 4 we are told equals 10. Let's bring the 4 to the other side by subtracting 4 from both sides. 4 drops out and 3x here. 3x equals 10 minus 6, 4 which is 6 and therefore x is equal to 2. And we can quickly verify 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10 which is exactly what we have here. Let's do the next one. 5a plus 3 we are told equals 8. Subtract 3 from both sides as always. Bring the number to the other side. So 5a is going to become 5 minus 3 which is 8 minus 3 which is 5. 5a equals 5 and therefore a must equal 1. And again you can quickly verify 5 times 1 is going to be 5. 5 plus 3 is 8 which is what we have there. Let's do the next one. 4z, 4z, 3 equals 15. 4z plus 15, we are, 4z plus 3 we are told equals 15. Subtract 3 from both sides, 3 drops out and 4z will be 15 minus 3 which is 12. Divide both sides by 4. 4 is going to drop out and z equals 12 divided by 4 which is 3. And again, we can put it back in there. 4 times 3, 4 times 3, 4 times 3 is 12, 12 plus 3 is 15. It works. Let's do the next one. 9y plus 2 is 20. 9y plus 2 is 20. Subtract 2 from both sides, 2 is going to cancel out, 9y equals 20 minus 2 which is 18 and therefore y is equal to 2, we divide both sides by 9. And once we find out that y is equal to 2, put it back in here, 9 times 2 is 18, 18 plus 2 is 20. Let's do the next one. 4y plus 8 equals 20. 4y plus 8 equals 20. Let's subtract 8 from both sides. 8 drops out and 4y equals 20 minus 8 which is going to be 12 and y will be equal to 3 if we divide both sides by 4. Now that was one way of doing this thing but when you come across something like this, let's take a look at it one more time. 4y plus 8 equals 20. The coefficient of y is 4. This is called the coefficient is 4. Here we have 8 as a constant and here we have a 20. What do we notice? What we notice is that all of those three numbers 4, 8 and 20 they are all multiple of 4. I was about to say multiple of 2 but in fact 
the common factor here is actually greater than 2, its common factor here is 4. This is one way of doing it, but the quicker way, the smarter way would have been to divide both sides of the equations by 4 right from the very beginning. Divide both sides of the equation by 4. Divide every single term on this side by 4. Divide every single term on that side by 4. And if you do that, the 4 drops out and we find the y plus 8 over 4 which is 2 equals 20 over 4 which is 5. And all we have to do at this point is subtract 2. And y equals 5 minus 2 which is 3 which is exactly what we found here. This is this is a quicker way, this is a smarter way, this is, this is considered to be more proper, this is considered to be more, more conventional. Do you understand? We missed that here, we did not realize that they all had a common factor. Let's do one more. Ten z plus five equals twenty-five. Ten z plus five equals twenty-five. Subtract five from both sides. Subtract 5 from both sides of the equation. You must always say the whole thing. Don't just say subtract 5. Subtract 5 has no meaning. Subtract 5 from where? And don't just say subtract 5 from this side. You can't just subtract or add uh, something to only one side of the equation. If you, if you add or subtract something to just one side of the equation, that equation is no longer valid. That, that equation is now no longer balanced. You have to say, you must say subtract 5 from, from both sides of the equation is what we did here. 5, positive 5 is going to cancel negative 5. 10z equals 25 minus 5 which is 20 and therefore z is equal to 2. What do you notice about this equation? The equation that we just finished here, what do you notice? Let's rewrite it here. What we notice is that we have 10z plus 5 equals 25. What we should have noticed, which we did not, what we should have noticed is that 10 is a multiple of 5, 5 of course is a multiple of 5, 25 is a multiple of 5. All of these numbers have a common factor of 5. We should have divided the entire equation by 5 right from the very beginning. It would have made our life a little bit easier. Let's do it. Let's divide everything that we see on this side by 5, all the terms on this side by 5, and all the terms on the other side divide all the terms by 5. These are called terms. These are two terms. That's another term. Let's divide everything on the left hand side by 5. Let's divide everything on the right hand side by 5. If we do that, 10 divided by 5 is 2 and we find that 2z plus 5 over 5 is 1 equals 5 divided by 5 is 5. Now we subtract 1 from both sides. 1 drops out. We find that 2z equals 5 minus 1 which is 4 and therefore z equals 2 just like before. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Seven B plus two equals twenty-three. Seven B plus two equals twenty-three. Let's subtract two from both sides. The two is going to drop out, and seven B equals 23 minus 2 which is 21, divide both sides by 7, 7 is going to drop out and b equals 21 divided by 7 which is 3. What else could we have done this? What else could we have done with this equation? Let's rewrite it here. Let's rewrite it here. 7b plus 2 equals 23. What else could we have done here? The answer is nothing. Nothing at all. I tricked you. Nothing. There are, there are no common factors here. This is about the only way. Do you understand? This, this equation cannot be simplified. If you could simplify an equation right from the very beginning, you should simplify it before you do all the work. Do you understand? This equation cannot be simplified. That's the only way to go about it. Let's do one more. 60 plus 3 equals 33. 60 plus 3 equals 33. Let's subtract 3 from both sides. Subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. Positive 3 kills the negative 3. And we find that 60 equals 30 minus 3, which is 33 minus 3, which is 30. Divide both sides by 6 so that we can kill this 6. And now D equals 30 divided by 6, which is 5. 
we put it back in the equation to verify it. 6 times 5 is 30, 30 plus 3 is 33, which is exactly what we have here. What else could we have done, this, done with this equation? 60 plus 3, we are told, is 33. What else could we have done this, with this equation? Well, we see a 6 here, which happens to be a multiple of 3. We see a 3 here, that happens to be a multiple of 3. We see a 33 here, that happens to be a multiple of 3. We could have actually divided the entire equation by 3 right from the get-go. Let's do that. Let's divide the entire equation by 3 right from the very beginning. 6 divided by 3 is 2, so we get 2d plus 3 over 3 is 1 equals 33 divided by 3 is 11. Subtract 1 from both sides. 1 is going to cancel out. 2d equals 11 minus 1 which is 10, divide both sides by 2, 2 is going to kill, and d equals 5, just like we found before. Just like we found before. Let's do one more. Ten p plus 2 equals 102. 10 p plus 2 equals 102. Let's subtract 2 from both sides. 2 drops out and we find that 10p equals 102 minus 2 which is 100 and therefore p equals 10. What else could we have done with it? Well, let's take a look here. 10p plus 2 equals 102. We notice that 10 is a multiple of 2. We notice that 2 is a multiple of 2. 102 is a multiple of 2 because it's an even number. We could have divided the entire equation by 2 from the very beginning. Let's divide the entire equation by 2 from the very beginning. Divide this term by 2. Let's divide this term by 2, this term by 2, and this term by 2. 10 divided by 2, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So 5p plus 2 over 2 is 1, 100 and 102 divided by 5, 102 divided by 5, how many 2's in 102? How the hell do I know? How many 1's does, how many 2's does 1 have? 1 has no 2, 1 has no 2. The 1 goes and joins the 10, becomes 1 goes and joins the 0, becomes 10. How many 2's does 10 have? 10 has 5 2's. How many 2's does 2 have? 2 has 1 2. It's 51. Let's subtract 1 from both sides and we find that 5p equals 51 minus 1 which is 50. 5p equals 50. Divide both sides by 5. 5 cross out and p equals 50 over 5 which is 10 just like before. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.